In this video, I'm going to tell you about portfolio manager salaries and what portfolio managers make. And holy smoke, is this burning. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah. I'm a CFA charter holder. I have an MBA in quant finance, and I used to work in equity research at Lehman Brothers. I do weekly videos on the subject of portfolio management and careers in portfolio management, and no one else is going to give you the real story, the real deal. So make sure that you click that subscribe button so you won't miss anything. I was reviewing the data last night, and what I'm going to tell you is kind of shocking. I researched all this stuff from the CFA Institute. I don't think anyone's talking about this this way. I can't wait to tell you about it. Honestly, this was really surprising. But before I get into it, comment below and tell me, are you a portfolio manager or are you trying to get a job in portfolio management? I would love to know, comment below. So before I get into what a portfolio manager earns and what a portfolio manager's salary is, I wanted to go over what exactly a portfolio manager is. A portfolio manager is a person who earns a fee for professionally managing somebody else's money. It could be an institution like a pension, a bank, or an insurance company, or it could be a retail client. Now, most portfolio managers, this is really important, don't get to be portfolio managers right out the gate. You have to be patient. Portfolio managers generally start out as a junior analyst for a couple of years. After that, they get promoted into becoming full analysts, equity research analyst, fixed income analyst on the buy side. And then after three to five years there, they can become a junior portfolio manager. And that normally is another three to five years. Depends on how well you progress, but we're talking about at least a decade of these underling roles before you actually get to manage money as a portfolio manager. This is a very serious job. Portfolio managers face a very high degree of liability. It's a huge degree of responsibility, and it's not something that should be taken lightly. It's gonna take you a lot of time to progress into this role. But most portfolio managers are not going to get to be portfolio managers with less than 10 years of qualifying experience in the roles that I just described. Now, how are portfolio managers compensated? How do portfolio managers earn money? Now, there are several different components and I'm gonna go over each of them. The first is your base salary. So I'm gonna to get to what the base salary generally is according to the CFA Institute research study in a minute, but first let me just talk about what the base salary actually is. This is what you're given on your paycheck on a consistent basis, okay? It's your monthly salary. The base salary is a lot of times when you get to be more senior, it's not as much as the bonus and the other components that I'm gonna describe. So just want you to like, when you first start out, your salary is gonna be most of your compensation, but then as you progress up, you tend to be rewarded or compensated more based upon your performance. So in the more senior ranks within portfolio management, the bonus and the other things I'm gonna describe tend to be a larger portion of your compensation. So the first part, like I said, is the salary. The second is the bonus. And the bonus is given on an annual basis. This is something that's normally commensurate with your performance. Like I said, the portfolio manager's performance is tracked directly because it's a tangible number, what kind of returns they did versus the index or versus the market. So the portfolio manager can make generally twice or you know, sometimes like, like much more than what their base salary is. But when you're first starting out, your bonus might be like the same as what your salary is, maybe half of what your salary is. You normally don't get a big, huge bonus as an analyst or as a junior when you're in portfolio management in some of these roles I described where you're working up to being a portfolio manager. Now, there are other types of compensation other than these cash components, which would be the salary and the bonus. There are other types, other ways that you can get compensated as well. It depends on the firm that you're working for. Some firms go for this and then some firms don't. So long-term incentives such as stock options or restricted stock units. This is a way to give you an equity stake in the company. This is 
after you've proven yourself, these are generally for the more seasoned portfolio managers, what the company is doing is that they're giving you a stake in essentially the success of the company. And so it's to motivate you to perform better on a long-term basis. And um, like I said, this is not something that they generally give out to people until they've really established themselves as portfolio managers. So I'm assuming this wouldn't be applicable to many of the people that are just starting out in the field of portfolio management. The second component is allowances. So these are like, again, depends on what the company's policy is, but it's these kind of educational benefits or transportation benefits, the kinds of benefits that you get that the company will give to you. Maybe it's something that you discuss with your boss, but these tend, the allowances tend to be a much smaller portion of your total compensation, but allowances do count within compensation as well, according to the CFA research study that I'm going to discuss. Now, there's an additional component that I didn't really track that closely or pay that much attention to in the numbers that I was looking at when I was preparing for this video, and that is the partnership stake. Now, again, I'm assuming that because I think most of you are going to be coming up in the ranks or new to portfolio management that the, you know, becoming a partner in the firm is generally not something that's going to be relevant for quite some time. So now I'm going to get into what the actual numbers are and what portfolio managers earn and what portfolio manager salaries tend to be. But first, I just want to tell you a little bit about this data so that you know what it really means. So um, data was mostly from the US, Canada, Switzerland, China, and the UK. This was from a CFA Institute study. I'll link the citation below if you're interested in contacting the CFA Institute to inquire about these numbers. The portfolio management data that I'm gonna discuss includes both equity and fixed income portfolio managers. Equity portfolio managers do tend to make a little bit more than fixed income portfolio managers. And it also includes both retail and institutional portfolio managers. And as I mentioned, institutional portfolio managers tend to make more money. This is for, these data reflect salaries that were recorded for the year 2018. Every year the CFA Institute does a, a study of compensation and so the 2019 numbers are going to be released um, later this year. I don't have them yet but when I have them I'll be making a video on it so make sure that you subscribe to this channel. These are not entry-level roles generally um, like I mentioned, when someone becomes a portfolio manager, the experience is probably between 10 and 20 years somewhere. Now, most of the time, like I said, when you're working into this role, you're an equity analyst or a research analyst. So I can make another video on equity research salaries. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below. But just by the nature of what the role is that we're talking about, these are probably not going to be extremely junior entry level roles. And so I'm about to get into it. I just want to tell you in advance, I really was a little bit shocked by this when I read this data. So I'm about to tell you just, you know, I don't know. I, I thought it was to me a little bit surprising. Okay. So here they are. Are you ready? These numbers are in average, okay? These are the averages. I'm going to read you the averages first. So you know the average between, the average is um, different from the median, okay? Refresh your statistics, ref refresh CFA level one quant if you want to know the difference between those. But the median in these numbers was always lower for some reason, and I think that's because there's probably a much um, a skew to the right as when you have portfolio managers making making high income they probably make way like into the millions which is going to be way above what it's going to really drag the average up although the median probably would be a little bit lower which is what i'm seeing in this data so the average base salary of a portfolio manager are you ready was one hundred forty four thousand dollars. the average bonus was according to the CFA Institute study, an average of $114,000. The 
long-term incentives such as stock options. Again, like not every portfolio manager is going to be eligible for these until you really kind of get respect at the company. But was it long-term incentive average was ninety-four thousand allowances. The average was twenty thousand. And so, like I said, the averages are higher because I think the high earners really skew it to the right. But if you want the median numbers, it would be the base of 126,000, a bonus of 40,000 is the median for portfolio managers, total cash compensation median for portfolio managers measured at 172,000, long-term incentives median was 36,000 and total compensation came in, the median was stated as 177,000. So what are the major points or takeaways that you can get from this? Um, well, it also stated in the CFA Institute study that there was little correlation between education and total compensation. And so this is something I've been saying over and over and over again in my videos. If you're not subscribed to this channel and, and checking out all of my portfolio videos, then please subscribe to the channel. But basically, uh, there's tremendous value in networking, tremendous value in getting on the ground, real world experience, being grounded in reality, knowing what you're talking about, knowing how to talk to people, being a great team member. All of these skills are skills that analysts can sometimes not be focusing on. And so the CFA Institute is just telling you bluntly that these are the numbers. I mean, you've got portfolio managers earning 150,000 plus, but in a way they're also saying, I mean, they're saying it directly, like there's not a, a correlation between the education level and, and what people tend to make. So I'm not saying go throw your education out the window, but what I'm saying is for those of you that are focused so much on the CFA exam, there's more to life and getting th this money that you want in this career doesn't necessarily depend upon passing the CFA exam. I say this over and over again, and I really want you to understand that. The other thing is it looks like that just based on the numbers, to make the most, you would want to become an institutional equity portfolio manager or a specialized portfolio manager. By the way, these are the harder types of roles to get. And senior real estate and hedge fund portfolio managers tend to earn more than the other areas. This is an example of a specialization. So real estate and hedge fund portfolio managers, higher earning than typical long only or generalist portfolio managers. And that makes a lot of sense. Again, this is specialized knowledge, hard to come by. Maybe it will take you a little bit longer to learn and aggregate and, and uh, you know, get to that level. But the data is saying that specialized portfolio managers do tend to earn more. So thank you all for watching. I hope that this was useful and I would love to hear in the comments what you think of this video and hopefully you can subscribe 